Hey everybody, WireWiz here. I've been working on a metaverse framework for a while now, and it's about time that I add a scripting system to my engine. As you could probably tell by the title of this video, we're not going to take the normal route of using an existing system. Instead, I'm making my own. Now, why would I take this arguably idiotic route rather than just going with a well-documented popular solution like Luja or Mono? Well, obviously it's because I have an aversion to doing things the normal way, and I just need to be different. I'm not like the other programs. I'm just built different. Though, I do think I have a good case to why making my own is a good idea. <laughs> but first, let me show you my proof of concept. Code would show up on screen now and everything. And I actually have big line breaks between like each one of the transitions. Here's what I have so far. It's super simple just to test if I could even pull off the basic pipeline. Right now it can only use integers and perform simple math operations. Here at the top you can see the scripting language itself. You'll notice it looks exactly like a C style language, and that's because I lied. I'm not making a new scripting language. What I'm actually doing is creating a custom compiler and runtime where the syntax of the language closely resembles regular C code. You agree to make your own scripting language. I lied. I might make variables uh, default similar to Rust, but that's beside the point. This ties into one of the reasons why I decided not to go with Lua. The people I'm building this engine for are people like Unity devs and VRChat creators, who are usually most comfortable using C Sharp, and I want to make the transition for them as easy as possible. Also, Lua indexes start at 1. It takes two steps for this language to compile. First, we feed it into the compiler, which does a couple of things. It uses a parser lexer I generated using a tool called Antler to generate what's called an abstract syntax tree, or AST for short. Then I convert that tree into what I call an AOT tree. No, 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 not like that. It stands for abstract operation tree. Basically, it's a bunch of nodes that if drawn out would look like a node scripting system from Wish. The reason I do this is because I can make it so they optimize themselves. For instance, if an addition node notices it's connected to two constant nodes, let's say two and two, it can just add them together and replace it with a constant node containing four. And since we do this with the furthest nodes first, it can cause a chain reaction that removes a lot. After we're done optimizing the AOT tree, we can use it to generate the bytecode by calling the generate function on each node. Then we get a bytecode that looks like this. Most of the opcodes I've chosen map pretty closely to their assembly language counterpoints, with a few extra that just represent constant numbers. This is then stored in an intermediate representation that I can then send to other computers or just convert it to machine code right away like we do in this example. To make this script usable, we throw it into the script runtime. This runtime's job is to store all of our currently loaded scripts and convert new ones to machine code. And in the future, it will also handle linking together scripts that reference each other. To do this, we call the assemble script function. In here, I use a library called assemjit to convert the script's functions into first assembly code and then raw machine code. It then stores function pointers to all of the compiled functions in a script object. Now all that we need to do to call our function from the main program is to grab the function we want from the script and call it like a regular C function pointer. And you know what the best part is? The reason that it's so easy to call a function is because it is a regular C function. No Lua or Mono runtime in between. Just raw machine code. If the bytecode is optimized, it could theoretically run just as fast as native C code. And hopefully, once I'm done memorizing the holy text, I will be able to get it to that point. So now that we're on the same ballpark of being on the same page, it's time for me to justify my actions more. Why create something new instead of using something that works perfectly fine? Well, to be completely honest, it was always the plan to create a custom scripting language for the engine. I built the entire thing with that in mind. In fact, when I started working on things, I originally tried creating a scripting language specifically for it before even starting working on it. But I do have some actual reasons for it. Performance has always been one of my biggest priorities, and it lives rent-free in the back of my mind influences every line of code that I write. When I tried integrating Lua into the engine earlier this month as sort of a placeholder where I was going to eventually replace it with this language that I am currently making, I found out I didn't really like it. One of the core parts of my engine is the ECS framework and the ability to operate on pointers to runtime defined structs. With Lua, I would need to copy a bunch of data for each function call and use an unoptimized library for interacting with the user-defined structs. And on top of all of that, I wouldn't be able to multi-thread ECS calls unless I want to load a copy of the same script for every single thread. 
Now, another option would be to add in something like the mono runtime and use C Sharp, but that is far more functionality and complexity than I need. So I decided to go the route of creating a minimal scripting language that excels at one thing. lowering the performance cost of calling functions to and from the main program. The idea is to make it so you can mesh the scripting system and the engine as close together as possible so there's no difference in speed between them. Thus was born BrainScript. I will be building it as a standalone project, so if you want to use it in your own stuff, feel more than welcome to. Though I would suggest waiting a few months, because all it can do right now is simple integer algebra. My next goals are first adding in floating point variables and coming up with cleaner optimization methods and flow statements like if and while. Then after that, finally adding in function calls and structures. I plan to start uploading videos like this, tracking my progress much more frequently. Next one will probably be on the improvements I've made to my editor since the last video. Future me here, in the half week it took us to film this and edit it, uh, I already have booleans, floats, and if statements working. But if you're interested in more frequent stuff, I post shorts pretty often as well. Uh, on the minor features as I add them. With this all said, if you want to enable my descent into madness, a great way to do that would be to join my Patreon. If you do, you get a gold name in my Discord. I also inconsistently stream to this channel as well, so if you want to watch me stare blankly at a screen while pondering how to, I'm going to optimize something that already works just fine, I do offer that as something you can do. That's my monologue for the day. I'll see you next time.